I wasn't expecting to say this, but I'm pretty impressed with the new Huawei Watch GT3. Now, not with the device as a whole, but it does one thing right, heart rate tracking. The reason I wasn't expecting this is because I recently tested the Huawei Watch 3, which was mediocre at best, and the Huawei Watch 3 has a design that is not that dissimilar from the GT3. In addition to the heart rate accuracy, in this video, I test the sleep tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, step counting, and GPS accuracy of the Huawei Watch GT3. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In my videos, I try to avoid lengthy discussions of the specs, so I'll try to summarize the 12 most important facts in about 90 seconds. The packaging of the Huawei Watch GT3 looks very similar to the packaging we've seen for other Huawei watches, with a simple dark presentation when you open the box. You get the watch itself and additionally a charger and some manuals. The chargers of the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro and the Huawei Watch 3 also seem to work on the GT3, so if you already have one of those, you have a spare one already. The GT3 comes in two sizes, 42mm and 46mm, and I have the 46mm version right here. The GT3 runs on Harmony OS, Huawei's own operating system. Huawei claims that the watch has 14 days of battery life with typical usage and 8 days with heavy usage. However, these numbers are cut in half for the 42mm version. The Huawei Watch GT3 has all-day SpO2 monitoring and has an accelerometer, gyroscope, heart rate sensor, pressure sensor, compass, SpO2 sensor and skin temperature sensor. However, now comes the most important bit. Huawei claims that the heart rate monitoring is better than ever. The GT3 has a newly upgraded heart rate module that includes 8 photodiode sensors and 2 sets of of light sources as part of the TrueScene 5.0 Plus technology. Huawei also claims that they reduced the noise using both hardware and software and that the algorithm can now more accurately detect your heart rate. This is actually an improvement of the more expensive Huawei Watch 3 which has half the sensors and light sources and includes the previous TrueScene 4.5 technology. Now the Huawei Watch 3 on the other hand does have a number of features that the GT3 does not have like more storage and RAM and eSIM compatibility. However on my channel we care most about the real life accuracy of the health tracking features and since I'm in a rather unique position to test the sleep tracking I want to start off with the sleep test. To test the sleep tracking accuracy, I'll compare the GT3 against the Dream 2 EEG headband, which can actually measure your brain waves and is purpose-built to track sleep stages. I perform these tests over a total of six nights. Here I show what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was predicted as each sleep stage by the Huawei Watch GT3. On top are the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, and on the left are the sleep stages according to the GT3. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was predicted as each sleep stage by the GT3. First of all, we see that about half of what was deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep by the GT3. However, also about 40% of the deep sleep was predicted as light sleep by the GT3. We can also clearly see this when looking at the individual nights, the first of which is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Huawei Watch GT3. I've highlighted all deep sleep here in purple. As you can see, the GT3 detects only a portion of the actual deep sleep, and it also detects a lot of extra deep sleep later in the night. We see the same for the second example right here, where it really detected an extraordinary amount of extra deep sleep that was not really there. And we see the same thing again for this third example night right here, so it's really a consistent problem over all the nights. Light sleep was detected correctly also at just under 50%, which is not great. It was most often confused with deep sleep, which matches what we saw for the individual nights, and sometimes also with REM sleep. REM sleep detection is by far the worst of any sleep stage with just under one third correctly detected. Most of what was REM sleep was actually detected as being light sleep by the GT3. If we look at the individual nights we see the same thing with REM sleep marked here in red. Only a fraction of my REM sleep is detected and it also detects a lot of extra REM sleep. And this is even more obvious for this second night. There's a lot of missing REM sleep and also a lot of extra REM sleep. And this is again confirmed in this third night. This also means we cannot really see the sleep cycles. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light and deep sleep together called non-REM marked here in blue, and each one ends in REM marked in red. As you can see, I had five sleep cycles this night. However, based on the data from the Huawei Watch GT3, I would not be able to see this at all. And we see the same in this next example right here. You would not be able to see your sleep cycles based on just the data from the GT3. So what about awake detection? Well, this is okay. About two thirds of my awake moments were correctly detected. However, the remaining one third was confused with any of the other three sleep stages. 
Looking at the individual nights, it seems that the watch is able to detect my longer awake moments, as you can see right here. However, my shorter awake moments are sometimes missed, like this one right here. And we see something similar for this second night right here. One of my awake moments is detected, but this one here is missed. And we can see this even more clearly during this night right here. My two longer awake moments are detected, however my shorter ones are missed. What about something way more simple? Can the Huawei Watch GT3 correctly detect when I wake up and when I fall asleep? That is displayed right here. On the vertical axis we have the dates of the nights I tested the Huawei Watch GT3 and along the horizontal axis is the time difference between the EEG device and the Huawei Watch GT3 for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than in reality and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see the Huawei Watch GT3 mostly detects me as waking up and falling asleep at the right times. The largest difference was about 17 minutes but overall there's not much to complain about here. Let's put all of this into perspective by comparing the Huawei Watch GT3 against a number of other watches I've tested in the past. That is displayed here and the Huawei watches perform pretty poorly. Now this graph contains a lot of information so let me try to explain what you see here. Along the horizontal axis we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. Now the better a device the more to the top right it is and as you can see the best devices are different Fitbits, in this case the Fitbit Sense Inspire 2 and Charge 5 which all perform about equally well and these are joined by the Whoopstrap 3.0, 4.0 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Now all the Huawei watches are on the bottom left right here being amongst the worst trackers in this comparison when it comes to sleep staging. The Huawei Watch GT3 performs about the same as the Huawei Watch Fit, the Watch 3 and the GT2e and again all are amongst the worst sleep trackers in this plot. Though the sleep tracking is not great for the GT3, there is one thing where the GT3 really impressed me, the heart rate tracking. Now companies often make claims about improved heart rate tracking and in most cases they do not deliver. However, in this case Huawei stays true to their word. In the next tests, I'll compare the heart rate of the GT3 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can record my heart rate very accurately. Let's dive into the data. I'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement and it will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Huawei Watch GT3. The blue line indicates perfect agreement so any measurement along this line at roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Huawei Watch GT3. The more measurements there are in a certain area the darker darker black the color and as you can see almost all the dots are along the blue line which indicates the GT3 performed almost perfectly. We can confirm that by looking at the individual rides the first of which is plotted here. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Huawei Watch GT3. As you can see the two lines basically overlap perfectly and you can mostly not see the red line of the Huawei Watch GT3 at all because of this perfect overlap. We see the same thing looking at this second spinning session with almost perfect overlap. There is very minor deviation here in this first section of the training, however I wouldn't say this is an issue at all. And we see the same thing for all spinning sessions, like this one right here. For all intents and purposes, there's perfect overlap between the Huawei Watch GT3 and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Next, looking at cycling outside, for which the overview is displayed here, we also see a reasonably good agreement between the chest strap and the GT3. Now, cycling outside is much more difficult for watches, since it involves much more bumpiness and therefore much more noise. The watch also tends to shift a bit more on my wrist, making it harder for it to correctly detect my heart rate. However, as we can see in this plot, compared to many other watches, the GT3 performs quite well, which we can confirm by looking at the individual bike rides, of which this is the first example. You can basically see almost perfect overlap between the Huawei Watch GT3 and the chest strap. Only in the beginning do we see some minor deviation, but all in all, this looks really good. And we basically see the same thing for this second bike ride. The overlap is really good between both devices and I'm pretty impressed with the heart rate accuracy of the GT3. There are some minor deviations like here and here but compared to many other watches this is pretty good. And we see the same thing for almost all bike rides. There are some minor deviations like here and also here but all in all compared to most other devices the Huawei Watch GT3 is doing a really good job. Out of the six rides where I tested the Huawei Watch GT3, there was just a single bike ride where I really struggled, namely this bike ride right here. As you can see, the GT3 was not able to accurately detect my heart rate during this ride. However, I suspect I did not optimally position the watch on my wrist for this ride, given that all the other rides were so much better. 
finally, let's take a look at weightlifting. Now, this is the type of exercise that watches struggle with the most because of all the tension placed on my wrist and on my arms. As you can see in this overview, impressively, most points are still along the blue line. However, in the higher heart rate range, there are some points below the blue line, indicating that the watch detected a too low heart rate. Looking at the individual sessions, we see that the watch is performing quite good. For this session right here, there's almost perfect overlap. Each time I do a set of my exercises, the watch was able to follow along correctly and track the increases in my heart rate. Almost no other watches so far have been able to do this. Only the Apple Watch and also the Garmin Venue 2 to some degree have been good enough. Now it does appear that with some types of exercises, the watch still struggles, as you can see in the beginning of this weightlifting session right here. This was when I was doing flies and exercise for my chest area. However, later I was doing dips and the watch performed really good again. During these exercises where I was exercising my back muscles and my biceps, the watch performed quite good again. However, here during this training session, in the beginning I was doing flies again and I struggled, but later when I was doing other exercises, it was almost spot on again. So it seems the watch struggled during flies, but during all other exercises, it was doing really good. So the improved sensors of the Huawei Watch GT3 are quite amazing at detecting my heart rate. However, are these sensors as good at detecting my SpO2 or oxygen saturation? Before answering that question, if this video has been helpful, a sub to the channel would be breathtaking. The way I tested the oxygen saturation measurements is twofold. First, over the last week, I measured my oxygen saturation more than 25 times at ground level in the morning and in the evening. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be within my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100%. The Huawei Watch GT3 should not detect any low values during these tests. For the second test, I tested if the GT3 was correctly able to detect a deep decrease in my oxygen saturation in a low oxygen environment. However, let's first look at those measurements at ground level, which are displayed here. On the left are roughly 25 measurements taken with the Huawei Watch GT3, and on the right match measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see, the Huawei Watch quite often detects a too low SpO2. The median value is around 95%, which is pretty low, which also means there are plenty of values below 95%, which is very unlikely to happen at ground level for me. So, so far this is not looking great. Next, let's see if the watch can correctly detect a truly lowered oxygen saturation. Specifically, I tested it during two flights because in flight, the pressure in the airplane cabin is decreased, effectively making it a low oxygen environment. Here I plotted my oxygen saturation values measured with a finger pulse oximeter during the first flight. In the beginning right here, before taking off, my SpO2 values are at normal levels. Then as the plane climbs, those values are decreased to around 92%, and then as we descend again, the values get back to normal. So how did the Huawei Watch GT3 perform during the flight? Well, that is depicted here in green. Each dot is a single measurement taken with the GT3. So the watch indeed detects relatively low SpO2 values. However, it always seems to detect these even before taking off and also after landing which again confirms it tends to detect low SpO2 values on me no matter what. Now the ground level values we previously looked at are displayed on the left here. And indeed, as you can see, the SpO2 sensor basically always detects the same range of values. No matter if I actually have a low SpO2 value or not, it will detect a relatively low value. Now we can look at that for a second flight, which is displayed right here. Now I am missing some data, but we can still see where the values are decreasing, where they're low and where they're increasing again. If we now plot the values according to the GT3 in here, again we see it does not have significantly lowered values whilst being in the air, but even after landing it still detects super low SpO2 values. Which again we can confirm by adding those values at baseline on the left right here, we indeed see that in flight the values are not lower than those measured at baseline. So the heart rate tracking is pretty amazing on the GT3, but so far the other features are less good. What about GPS tracking? I tested that while cycling to and from work, and I wanted to test two things. Things. One, how long does it take for the watch to acquire a signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times? That is displayed here for three times I cycled to work. Now I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green markers indicate those moments where it connected the GPS signal and as you can see there was quite some delay in it getting a signal sometimes. So here for instance it acquired a signal almost instantly but here I was already about one fourth of the way to work before it acquired the signal. However, it seems that once the signal is acquired, the paths appear to overlap quite well. As you can see here, for instance, and if we follow along the route, the paths are quite close to each other, so that's pretty good. We can look at the same thing for me cycling back from work, and again we see there's a big difference in how long it took to acquire the signal. Here, for instance, it was almost instantly, but here it was almost halfway home before it got the signal. 
Again, looking at the quality of the signal, this appears to be pretty good. The lines mostly overlap or are pretty close to each other. And in this case, for instance, I really did take a different route. So all in all, it seems that the signal acquisition takes some time, but the quality of the signal is quite good. In terms of GPS accuracy, the watch appears to be pretty decent. However, it does take some time to get a signal. Now, the watch also features a step counter. To see if this counts my steps accurately, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps in segments of 1,000 steps. To get an accurate step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and I took four times exactly 1000 steps. I wore the GT3 on my left arm and I alternated holding the tally counter in my left and right hand for each set of 1000 steps, which is what the right and left label refer to here. Now these are the actual steps counted by the GT3 and as you can see they were pretty close to the actual 1000 steps I took for each of the four segments. However the Huawei Watch GT3 did tend to overcount some steps, though not drastically. Just to put it into perspective, here are the steps counted by the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra and the ScanWatch Horizon which I both wore at the same time. As you can see the ScanWatch Horizon performed about equally well to the GT3, however the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra overcounted much more. So in that perspective the Huawei Watch GT3 is pretty decent. Overall the step counting of the Huawei Watch GT3 is pretty good and it counts the correct number of steps while walking. However decent step counting is not a new development and many watches have this. What is new is that Huawei promised better heart rate tracking and they delivered. The sleep tracking on the other hand is not very good, though you can use the watch to track when you go to bed and when you wake up. The GPS sensor appears to be accurate when active, though it does take some time to get a signal. The oxygen saturation sensor is not very good and I would not rely on it at all. However all in all the Huawei Watch GT3 3 is amongst the top 3 watches I've tested so far when it comes to heart rate tracking. It performs about the same as the Garmin Venue 2, though the best heart rate tracker is still the Apple Watch. If you're in the market for good heart rate tracking and you're not a fan of the Apple ecosystem, check out this video right here on the Garmin Venue 2. If you are considering getting an Apple Watch, that video is right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.